All right, hello everyone. I am back. Corey Dowds of Eye of the Veda here. I wanted to give some commentary on the chart of the now famous Tiger King, Joe Exotic, as he's known. So quick pretext, basically a Netflix documentary was released. It was like, became number one in the country. It happened to come out a month ago when everyone was just sitting around um, on lockdown. So I think a lot more people watched it than would have normally. Um, I watched it too, and I don't normally get interested in these things, but I just felt drawn to watch it for some reason. And um, there's definitely some really cruel things that, you know, you see some cruel footage of animals, just so you know, so if you're very sensitive here, you may not want to watch this documentary. Um, there's a lot of drama and stuff in this documentary. So I was like, I mean, this, this guy, <clears throat> if you watch the documentary, you know, if you don't know, this video may not be as interesting to you, but you know, it's basically, this is the chart of the main Tiger King in the documentary. And this guy is a really interesting character. He's kind of like a redneck, if you will, but he's also flamboyantly gay. And he is very charming and very like talented. And he's a very, he's a musician. He's doing all these things. And so the way they make this documentary is like, yeah, this guy's a maniac and he's insane, but they make him very lovable. You know what I mean? And, and he's in jail by the end of the documentary and they're like, people are like free Joe exotic and all this stuff. So I wanted to look at the chart of him because I thought it might be interesting. And I just didn't know if his data was available. And then a YouTuber commented on one of my videos and asked me if I knew that about his data and what I had to say. So I was like, Oh, this could be a fun one to look at. So starting off, he is a Libra ascendant. His rising sign is Libra. When the Lagna or the rising sign is Libra, it means that um, one is ruled by Venus. So, you know, the sign of trade and diplomacy and love and relationships and harmony and beauty was all big in his chart. Um, he was very flashy. He's very fashionable. You know, he likes to dress good, looks to look good, a little bit, almost a little bit vain, you know, quite vain actually. Um, so you can see some of these Libra qualities and just his personality that is conveyed in the film. The ruling planet of Libra Venus goes to the fifth house, kind of like the fifth sign, the sign of Leo, the lion. So the fifth house has to do with your pride and your sense of dignity and how you're creating and running your kingdom and managing it, just like the sign of Leo. So it's no surprise that his ruling planet goes there. And it's with Saturn, which is the planet of wild animals. Now, Saturn is literally a quadruped. He rules the quadruped form. Saturn and Mars rule that. And we're going to get to Mars in a minute. So Saturn is delighted by his Venus. But then at the same time, Saturn is starving his Venus. So with, by knowing the Avashtas, if you know your Avashtas, you can read a lot into this placement and understand why he was the way he was. And then with Mercury there, Mercury too is delighting the animals, Saturn, but then Saturn is also starving Mercury. And then from the standpoint of the animals, Saturn is the animals, the moon is starving it very strongly. That moon in the 10th in its own sign, his ego starved the animals and harm, caused them to be harmed eventually. Mars also starves Saturn, that planet, um, from its opposite aspect. So we see that on the one hand, Saturn is showing good karma, animals in the fifth house of good past life karma. So he had some merit to have good karma with animals. And what's really fascinating is Aquarius, as well as the 11th house, has specifically to do with animals you raise for monetary gains. So basically like livestock in the old days, but for him, they weren't livestock, but he still made money off of them. So that has to do with that sign of Aquarius and his 11th house, which has Mars in it. I know you guys just can't wait for me to get to that, but just hang on. Um, so the next thing that's really important to know is that Venus, his ruling planet, is being ashamed by Saturn, the planet of animals. Um, and Saturn is shaming Venus and Mercury in this, in this chart. Um, I just did a video on Mercury being ashamed, so go watch that if you want to know more about it. And the Mercury um, being ashamed um, 
deals a lot with like just the the type of lifestyle he wanted to live, the type of things he wanted. He was a gay man, you know. He, he just he wasn't he was kind of ashamed for for the lifestyle he wanted to live, um, and what you know he was into and everything. Um, now let me look at my notes here. Um, so yeah, now we can talk about the obvious thing in the chart is well before i go to that notice that jupiter is very strong jupiter is in pisces um with his son delighting his son but it is in the sixth house which it makes it very stuck and hard to work with so he was very he tried to do good and he was a good hearted guy and he when he did bad it wasn't because he didn't think he, he it's because he thought he was doing the right thing but he was just misled or um you know, or kind of deluding himself. But so anyways, that Jupiter in Pisces kind of does speak to the, um, a lot of his, his charminess, why people liked him in the, in the documentary, even though he did a lot of atrocious things and all. Um, it's just kind of interesting. I wanted to mention that. Okay, now we're going to talk about the obvious thing in the chart was like, my hypothesis before looking at this chart was that this guy better have planets, he better have at least something going on in Leo some sort of argila, some sort of yoga is important yoga is going on. And he better have planets or activity involving Mars and Saturn, the quadruped planets, the, the planets of beasts of burden like lions. And he better have the quadruped signs active, which are Aries, Capricorn, and Leo. These are the signs of big animals and quadruped, big, big things going on. Note that he has that going on. He has K2 and Capricorn, so that's really what he wants to make himself happy in the fourth house. He wants that sort of power that animals symbolize. And then Mars in the 11th is in Leo and it is in an Argola. So now we're going to talk about that. So Mars is when a planet's in the 11th house and there's no other planet in the third house, it's in an Argola, an unbroken Argola. Argola means a fastened lock, like in Sanskrit, like when you when you button your shirt or something, you, you, you lock it in, you argila. So Mars, he had this karma with Mars being delighted by Leo, the sun, the lion. He had a fastened karma to that, that he was fastened to from birth, his argila. Argila planets bring you wealth in life. Him owning tigers brought him his fortune and his fame and his wealth. That's that's what that's what Jaminy would call it. You know what I mean? That's what that is. Um, let's look at a little more. So Leo specifically deals with wild beasts of prey, but specifically wild cats. So that's really cool. And like I said, Mars represents quadrupeds. Um, so beast animals that walk on all fours. And to top it off, like if you read Graha Sutras, you know, Ernst even talked about it in there, uh, Mars would rule the tigers and the lion-like quadrupeds that are fast. And then Saturn would rule naturally more of like the elephant or the big beasts of burden, slower, like an ox, a work animal, a tortoise, things like that, that are slower and, you know, have more of a Saturnian quality. So having Mars in Leo in the 11th house and in Argola, is about as perfect as it gets to have to to convey this life that we watched on the Netflix documentary. Why do I keep talking about the eleventh? Again, remember the eleventh house. If you read Parashara, the eleventh house is the specific bhava of livestock, which is to say animals you make a profit off of, not pets. Pets and pet animals are the fourth house. A lot of people don't know that pets. Your animals, like when people, I've had a client ask me, where are my lost snakes before? I helped her find her lost snakes. I used the fourth house for pets. But if they were pets she made money off of, I would have used the 11th house. And then if they were wild animals, I would use the sixth house. So wild animals is the sixth house. Everyone always just assumes all other animals are gonna be in that category, but they're not. Okay, sorry. So now back to, yeah, Mars is literally symbolizing the tigers and the lions and they're in the house of making money and all of that stuff. Um, and what's funny is when you have cruel planets in Argola, you make money through cruel ways, through like, uh, you know, basically if you watch the documentary, there's a lot of Krura or malefic kind of influence in his life. 
then what's also really crazy is that that Mars is in Aslesha Nakshatra, and Aslesha is the Nakshatra of poison, but also embracing. And he basically forced tigers to mate. He base like Aslesha has to do with um, sexual embracing, but also embracing all kinds. But kind of in this cruel, toxic, lusty way is always what it's more conveyed by, like um, like snakes coiling up. You know what I mean, and things like that. Um, uh, so he basically forced tigers to you know copulate and make babies because then like the tiger babies made him all the money you know what i mean and um so that's wild and that's a cruel effort and then he also used all kinds of drugs and sedatives and poisons and oscillation like toxins and chemicals to be able to control these tigers and so we see that in the oscillation energy and again, that Mars is retrograde. Like I've said before, a retrograde planet shows there's even more past life karma to be worked out with it, but it's not something super faded like um, Rahu or Ketu. <clears throat> and then also having an oscillation kind of brings up just background themes of like a lot of sexuality, a lot of lust, uh, poison, drugs, jealousy, and betrayal. And these are all huge, huge themes in that documentary. So it's really interesting. <clears throat> now, another thing that's worth mentioning to jump back to the, the Venus in the Aquarius part, Venus is uh, starved by Saturn and ashamed by Saturn, and that's a place, but it's also delighted. So it's like a place that's showing some happiness with love, but also being uh, have, having your heart broken and loss of love and multiple marriages and or feeling ashamed over what one did with their love or the choices they made in love. And if you watch the documentary, there's a really, really, really dramatic thing that happened with his first husband. And I won't go into it though, because it's very gnarly. But yeah, that's what that connected to. And the trauma of that, and then why he just remarried quickly um, and couldn't deal with that shame and everything um, of what happened around that. Um, and it's also really interesting because it's all happening in air signs. So that conveys that he is the topic of social controversy, that it's a very, it's, you know, the whole world was talking about it, socializing about it, you know? And then Aquarius also has to do with influential people. And then um, to take that even further, Saturn, that proud Saturn um, is in Danishta Nakshatra or Shravishta Nakshatra. The older name was literally, the older name of that Nakshatra, Shravishta, means literally Ishta means like praise and favor. Shrava means to talk about. So the thing most desirable to talk about, the thing most worthy of talking about. So literally you see like this guy and his life and that shame with the animals of Venus and life, so all that, this was also indicated as being fated to be worthy of talking about, worthy of discussion. And so the whole world was making memes about it and discussing it. So even if you're going to be one of those famous people who's the subject of memes and pop culture, that's going to be in your chart. Um, and you can kind of see it there. There's really a lot more that I want to say about Danishta and Shravishta, but I keep holding off because I'm making a course about it. And I just know some really cool secrets about a thing I found through my own research, but that's definitely a star of making you really famous and influential. I'll put it that way. Um, and then notice how K2 is in Capricorn. How fascinating is that? Because Capricorn is where the eclipses just happened. So this must have been fated for him to become such a number one documentary in America and such a big topic. But K2 and Capricorn also shows that his security paradigm is about being Capricorn. Capricorn is the gator. It's about dominating. It's about literally the sign of having control over things externally. So he was all about controlling the lines or this or that, you know, and having like, that's this, I, this, what the line conveys has a lot to do with this idea of control and domination you know but rahu was in cancer um so really and with the moon and so you know like embracing more being vulnerable was what he was destined to feel like to embrace his vulnerability to embrace his emotions his femininity and all that and by the end of the documentary he's just crying a lot he's so sad he's he's swept up he's been forced into that rahu zone so it's very interesting um and then one more thing I will tell about this is that uh, Saturn and Rahu are in the Swamsha. Um, not sure if you, you hope you guys can see it right there, but Moon, Saturn, and Rahu are all in the Swamsha. That's a Saturn, Rahu, and the Swamsha is a placement Jaimini gave for 
selling and consuming betel, betel leaves like drugs. So it's a placement that still translates into the modern day era of selling or taking drugs. And this guy, his first boyfriend was a meth addict. And so he, he or her husband, so he like had meth. So he kept that, that boyfriend with him through being his connection to get meth and stuff. So it was really wild. Um, but you can see that going on. He definitely did sell and take hard drugs. Um, you won't see that placement if it's just like, I don't know, like I've known people that sold weed or things like that. And I didn't see that in their chart. So that's a thing that's more serious drugs though. If you're, if people who are selling like hard drugs or pills or things like that, um, you'll see that in their chart. Okay. And then one more thing um, that I noticed Moon is the Atmakarika, and Moon makes one a musician. And he literally made music videos. Um, and and he's a, he was a successful musician. It was part of his rock star karma. And he made albums and was actually had successful music videos that were well produced and all this stuff. Um, and it, it also makes him very popular too. And we saw how popular he was. And, um, you know, like that was all good for him to step into his emotional body and all that a little bit more. So that's just a little analysis of the Tiger King for you guys, and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you very much.